So the next match we have here is a long-awaited match because as always with MJF, that's like his ongoing storyline is whenever you have beef with him, you always gotta like, you know, survive the gauntlet and shit before you can get in the ring with him. But uh, yes, it's finally MJF versus Wardlow. As you know, Wardlow uh, betrayed MJF that been putting up with this shit for the longest time and he gave um, CM Punk the ring to knock him out and to defeat MJF in the last pay-per-view. So since that happened, MJF started doing things like, like you're still under contract with me, you're a little piggy, you gotta do whatever I say, I still own your ass. They, they added the extra thing like, oh, I guess his mom needs the money, so hey, if you don't, you don't want mama to starve, you better do what I say. So, uh, like for a while, Wardlow was just attacking or trying to attack MJF and gain past security. Now he has to be like handcuffed with no theme music and security brings him in. And of course, uh, you know, he has to defeat certain things here and there. The most noticeable one was him fighting against Big Cass. I really forgot what he called himself in AEW, but he's Big Cass and... He's also like, I think he's also from Impact Wrestling now, Wrestling and Impact and everything. So that was the biggest thing. That was like the biggest, you know, kind of cameo guest star kind of thing. And um, there was a steel cage match that I missed. I'm so pissed off that I missed it. I did see the highlight though, where uh, Sean Spears, I, I guess it was Sean Spears versus uh, uh, Wardlow. And when MJF was there, MJF was grabbing onto Wardlow so that he could bash him with a chair, but Wardlow moved out of the way, and Sean Spears actually, like, you know, cracked MJF on the head with the steel chair knocking his ass out and everything. That was, like, a big to-do. And also, there was the other thing where MJF had to, where Wardlow had to withstand 10 lashes with a belt and everything from MJF. And, yeah, Wardlow played it cool, man. He was just there chilling. Like, just, you know, a little breeze there, whatever. MJ was just getting more and more pissed off. Like, no, 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 you can feel it, man. You can feel it. Stop fucking faking it or whatever. Until he lost her patience and started choking him out and doing more shit, you know. But anyways, after enduring all of that shit, finally we have the big match of MJF versus Wardlow. And, oh my god, I don't know. I'm gonna say Wardlow, but it's hard because, like... MJF actually wins a lot of his feuds. You know what I mean? Like, like they're like, I I can't think off the top of my head. I, I I know he beat Cody, and I forgot who else he beat. But but he does win a lot of his feuds. So even though like he does all this crap, and then you get the big match, and you're thinking like, okay, here's the big match where MJF pays for all the shit he's done. He still wins the feud anyways, which is surprising. You know what I mean? So um. I'm going to say Wardlow, but I'm not surprised if MJF wins. But I'm still going to go for Wardlow. Uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, I definitely got Wardlow on this one. Um, it's time for him to actually, you know, come into his own and, you know, get the attention he deserves, which he's already doing and proving. I mean, he just had a sick match not too long ago, and I saw the the power bomb he did on the guy on the chair. I'm like, how the hell did he survive that? But I mean, he's already proving himself and he's definitely gonna have to be a main C on the roster. They'd be stupid to write him out of the plot at this point. So yeah, I definitely got Wardlow for the win. I got a feeling MJF's going to try to pull something and something. Yeah, it's going to blow up in his face, but yep, definitely Wardlow for the win. Yeah, I'm going to be the contrarian again in this match because, um, I don't know, because kind of like uh, what Mark says, MJF so managed to win the matches, so there's a big possibility they could actually win this match, you know, of all his shenanigans they always does, but I don't know, man, I think he might actually win this match. The other thing is that, I mean... Wardlow was the guy that would bring in the ring. Who's going to do that now? Like, Sean Spears? Because, like, the Pinnacle just unofficially, unannounced, just they just broke up. You know what I mean? Like, FTR is definitely not with them anymore. Not now that they're, like, super loved as faces and all that. So, I guess Sean Spears is going to try to run in with a chair sometime during the match. Or he'll be the new guy that does the, the ring whenever MJF is close to losing. That, that's kind of curious. You know what I mean? If Wardlow wins, he will be granted from his release contract with MJF. But if MJF wins, Wardlow will be permanently banned from signing with AEW forever. 
So with a stipulation like that, it seems pretty obvious that Wardlow is going to win, especially considering how over he is. It would make no sense for him to lose. And it would just be so dumb. Like, it would be one of the dumbest decisions they could make. Okay, so here the next match we're going to have is the Women's Owen Hart Foundation Tournament Final, which is Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. DMD. Yep. Versus Ruby Soho. And isn't this like whoever wins this um, is going to get a shot at champ or something? Because I don't know. Because that's the thing though. Like Britt Baker was just a champ. And she had a long ass title reign. So for her to beat Ruby Soho. And then like you know go after the title again. Like ah, I, I don't know. I don't know. And... I agree with some people. One of the last matches was Ruby Soho versus Chris Statlander. In my opinion, it should have been Statlander to win and be here. I mean, Ruby Soho's cool and all. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I, I like her too and everything. But you compare Ruby to Chris Statlander. I, I feel Chris Statlander's been there longer and she earned a push. It would have been kind of badass to have her go against uh, Thunder Rosa. Ruby Soho versus Thunder Rosa. I'm not too sure. We'll see how that goes if she does win. But I just don't really see Britt Baker winning. Because, again, she's just been champ. And it'll kind of reek like Charted Flair, sort of. Like, the whole, like she's going to run to the title so quickly, so soon. Or whatever. So, I don't know, man. I'm going to go for Ruby Soho. Yeah, I got Ruby Soho on this one. But considering both their wrestling styles... You know, I wish this was, like, a rougher match. Yeah, I know it's an Owen Hart Foundation Finals match. But, like, it would have been better if this would have been, like, a falls count anywhere. Uh, no holds barred. You know, no DQ match. Like, I think it would have been a lot better to see those two in that type of match. Because those two are both, both kind of rough. They both can get dirty. But... Uh, playing by the rules with this one, I'm going to go with Ruby Soho. This is quite a match. Uh, but yeah, I know it's going to be cheesy, but I think that uh, I don't know if we're still playing the match. You know, all the shenanigans, you know. I don't know, Johnny. You're just saying that because she said she liked your shirt. Yeah, but it's also because, um, I don't know, they, they always... It's it's kind of like a repetitive theme that they do with Britt Baker. It is kind of... She is starting to be like the sharded flair thing that it's like she seems to be winning all the time all the time for the most part yeah she might have a occasional loss here and there but for the most part they kind of maintain that kind of like momentum with her if i'm not mistaken yeah another thing we also have to consider is that you know ruby soho might be outnumbered because you know jamie hater and reba and all that so we got to see that but i don't know i, I kind of want to see her go through the title again so soon but hey, the, the, the thing about uh, that anything can happen, like, there's a lot of suspense. You just never know what's going to actually happen. I'm going to go with Ruby Soho. Uh, honestly, they need to do something with her. And they couldn't give her the title. They couldn't ever win the tournament or the Battle Royal. But they could make her... Uh, I'm talking about the previous women's tournament they had. And it's about time they did something with her. I think this is the final time to really give her that, you know, push and have her do something with it. I'm not sure what the Owen Hart Foundation tournament actually would entail for the winning. Um, but I believe that Ruby Soho will win. So right now we got Samoa Joe... Who uh, has the Donkey Kong theme? Because I'm sorry, that that's what it sounds like to me when he comes in. Dun 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 dun. Like you're come throwing barrels and shit. Uh, Samoa Joe versus Adam Cole. I guess just a match, isn't it? Or let me see here. No, this is the uh, men's Owen Hart's Foundation Tournament Final and everything. Oh, and extra rules to prevent cheating. Jay Lethal, Sanjay Dutt. And Satnam Sain are all banned from ringside, which makes me think that the women's match should probably say something like Reba and Jamie Hayter are banned from ringside, right? So, uh, yeah, all of uh, uh, 
I wouldn't. No, they're not exactly Adam Cole's guys, but but Jay Lethal just has beef with Samoa Joe, so he's always interfering in his matches, whether they involve him or not. So yeah, so Jay Lethal and all his cronies are banned from ringside to have a clean fight between Samoa Joe and Adam Cole, and I hope that Samoa Joe just just wrecks Adam Cole and beats him. I just I don't know, man. Like I just wasn't there during the NXT era for him and everything. For the Undisputed Era and whatever. So, I just... I don't know. I just never cared much for Adam Cole and everything. I'm kind of glad he's also distracted for, with other things. And not just going after Hangman Page. Because I was afraid he was going to beat him and get the title. Eventually, if he just kept going after him over and over and over. Because sooner or later, right? But, um, yeah. I'm glad he's in other things right now. So, hopefully, Samoa Joe destroys him. So, my vote goes for Samoa Joe. Uh, I, I don't know. The, another thing I have to keep an eye is, on is that... Jay Lethal's cronies may be banned from ringside, but Adam's cro Adam Cole's cronies are not banned. There's no mention of them, so we gotta watch out for those guys and everything. But um, yeah, we'll see what happens. But I'm just gonna go with Samoa Joe, but he's got some tough numbers, you know. I agree with you there. Uh, Samoa Joe's gonna win it, but it's gonna be a struggle because I got a feeling that Adam Cole's cronies are going to show up and just kind of screw with him during the match, you know, maybe plant a finisher on him or throw a chair or something of that nature to kind of mess with Samoa Joe. But I got a feeling he's going to overcome all of it and get, and get the win on this one. So yeah, my pick is Samoa Joe. Yeah, I think I agree with this one. I think uh, it's going to be Samoa Joe. Uh, but again, there's, there's still going to be, some cheating here and there. I'm pretty sure Adam Cole's, uh, you know, cheaters are gonna just show up out of nowhere. You know, so it'll be it'll be a, an intense match, though. That I can tell you that. But yeah, I think it'll be uh, Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe versus Adam Cole for the first time ever. This may be a potential of three matches that will be match of the night. Um, I believe that this will probably be the best overall match as a whole and I believe that the winner will most likely be Samoa Joe my guess is Samoa Joe all right so the next one is a big uh, three-way tag team match and um, even though the title is still on the line though so it's a three-way tag team match but you know how it is the champs don't necessarily have to be pinned they can still lose anyway you know so it's the current tag team champions Jurassic Express, Jungle Boy, and Luchasaurus. To be honest, I haven't really seen them for a while, but I've been I've been missing episodes due to work, so I don't know. But uh, Jurassic Express versus Team Taz, which is Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs versus Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland. It is pretty intense because obviously Team Taz wants the titles, but at the same time. Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs have been, they've really been messing a lot with Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland a lot. So there's a lot of animosity between those those two teams in particular. I don't really think Keith Lee and them ever really mess with Jurassic Express or whatever. So basically, it's kind of interesting though. So you got one team that hates the other and that team also hates the other. I mean, we, we might see lots of team ups between Jurassic Express and Keith Lee and them to be honest. Because they both hate Team Taz, I would say, right? But, uh, and yeah, Team Taz is the underdog. And I don't know. I don't know. This is an interesting one because Jurassic Express has they have been tag team champs for a good while and everything. So I don't know, man. What if uh, what if we do a shocker? I'm gonna throw a curveball. Why don't we just say in this one? I'll say that Keith Lee and uh, Swerve Strickland surprise us all and actually win the titles. We'll see what that what that goes. Yeah, I'll take a gamble on that. I'll, I'll give it to those two guys. What do you guys think? Yeah, I actually have to agree with you there. Um, you know, like you said, Team Taz has been screwing around with Keith Lee and Swerve for too long, and then they've been messing around with Jurassic Express. I got a feeling, yeah, they're going to get double teamed uh, as far as Team Taz and, you know, those guys go. They're pretty much got targets on their backs at this point. But... I feel like at the end of it, uh, you know, Keith Lee, still relatively new to AEW. Heck, he was still relatively new to WWE when they gave him the boot. You know, I think it's time for them to throw a little bit of spotlight on him, and especially Swerve Strickland, 
So, yeah, surprisingly enough, as much as I like Jurassic Express, uh, I give it to Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland for the win. You know, I was personally going back and forth with this one. Um, but I'm kind of agreeing, pretty much agreeing with, with you guys' point of view. It would be a big turn because I think a lot of people subconsciously are going to be expecting, oh, the Jurassic Express is going to win this match. But, you know, what if Team Taz win this match? And that would be pretty interesting. And again, kind of like what you guys say, I mean, especially Swerve Strickland, I mean, I don't think he doesn't have much airtime as far as I'm concerned. So these are still very good, like, talented wrestlers. So while we, you know, boost it up a little bit and put them more on the spotlight, you know? So I don't know. I think, I think I'm going to root for um, Team Taz. I mean, I would have preferred the Jurekic uh, I would have preferred a Jurassic Express winning match, but just for those occasions, just to see how, uh, how what happens when the team Taz wins, it, it would be a big shifter, though. I would I would tell you that. Honestly, yeah, they've been with the company long enough. They kind of deserve a bone once in a while, you know. They're, they're just like random. They're just there to lose, and the only titles they ever have are titles that don't. I mean, where do, where is the FTR title even from, or whatever that they defend I... sometimes, like? I don't even know where the FTR title even came from. I think it was just something they pretty much made up. Yeah, so they don't—they never really have like a real whatever, man. Like I don't know. I mean, I guess it would be time to throw them a bone. Finally, they can't be losers forever. I mean, Taz can't be talking up his team all the time if they're fucking losing all the time. You know what I mean? But I mean, I'm still gonna go with Keith Lee though. But but yeah, I mean, it would be surprising. But either way, I guess the general consensus is that I guess it's about time for. Uh, Jurassic Express has dropped titles. Like, I wouldn't be, like, super upset if they still won. The, I mean, I don't know. I, I just like long title reigns, especially for how long it took for Jungle Boy and them to, you know, to go over with the crowd and everything. But I don't know. I mean, it might be a good time to, to, to drop the titles by now. But I guess we'll, we'll find out. Um, you know what? I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably go with the wild card here. And I'm gonna guess Team Taz wins. Um... I just, I don't know why. I just get this vibe that uh, they're going to pull the trigger on them finally and, uh, you know, give them a good heel run with the tag champions. I'm not sure how long, but, you know, hopefully sometime good. And uh, so the next match we have here is the big uh, AEW women's uh, title match, which is Thunder Rosa versus Serena Deeb. And holy shit, Serena Deeb. I mean, she's just, she's just vicious, you know, she's just like, damn, man, she's out there to hurt people, you know, just her whole feud with, uh, Hikaru Shida and fucking up her leg, and it's like the big thing, I'm surprised she actually won the comeback, like, they do the big story where, you know, she injured Hikaru Shida, and she's out for a couple of months, her leg all busted up, she comes back, like, healed, she's back, she's, she's, she's ready for payback, she's awesome, and she loses again, Serena Deep just fucks her up again, you know, and just the whole thing with, uh, Hikaru Shida winning her, I think it was, like, 30th win, little trophy they gave her, and, and Serena Deep, like, bashed the fucking trophy on her, like, holy crap, you know what I mean, so Serena Deep's, like, like, she's, she's vicious, yo, but, um, yeah, I'm just going to give it to Thunder Rosa. Uh, obviously, she just became champ. I would be pissed if she lost the title that quickly, man. But, like, Serena Deep's going to give her a fight. This is going to be one hell of a fight. Like, like she's just vicious, man. She's scary. Like, don't I don't want to run into her in a dark alley and she's in a bad mood. You know what I mean? But, uh, it'll be a hell of a fight. But I still give it to Thunder Rosa. But, I mean, I don't know, man. Expect blood. Expect her to target, like, body parts to try to cripple her leg and shit, like, I don't know, man, it's, it's gonna be vicious, like, you know, what's her name, uh, Britt Baker, she's a big heel, she does all the, you know, heel tactics, but, but Serena Deep, she's about to fuck you up, you know what I mean, so this is gonna be a fight, but I'm still gonna give it to Thunder Rosa, though. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to give it to Thunder Rosa. She just became champ, but this is not going to be easy. It's not going to be a fun, technical, you know, E for everyone and the family type match. This is going to be a straight out damn brawl. Like, Deebs, we know she's going to, She's. we know she's methodical. We know she goes for body parts. 
We know she'll grab anything in the house, including the kitchen sink, and try to knock you with it. So it's not going to be an easy match. This is going to be an all-out brawl with a referee watching, like flat out. But somehow, I got a feeling that Thunder Rosa is going to pull through. So my call's on Thunder Rosa on this one. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I think uh, it's going to be Thunder Rosa, but it will be an extreme change. that she is fighting against uh, Sarita. But yeah, I think, yeah, Thunder Rosa, Amanda, Amanda. Yeah, like I don't know if she was always like that or just just recently because she got pissed off at Hikaru Shida. But yeah, man, she just has like this this savagery, man. Like she really built. Like you, you feel the anger just coming off her. Like like obviously he caught um obviously Thunder Rosa's got a temper too. And, and you know you fuck with her, she's gonna get mad. She, she's gonna go all up on your face. But Serena Deeb's like pissed before she even steps in the ring. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's crazy. Like, some of the stuff that I've seen, I'm just wondering, what... How is she even still wrestling? <laughs> like, how has no one, like, literally barred her from it yet? But, you know, it's just really good storytelling, and she's really good at she's really good at what she does. But, yep, it's going to be a brawl, I can tell you that. One of these days, I want to see Serena Deep going up against Marina Shafir. That's, that's just fucking rock. You're trying to get somebody put in the ambulance. <laughs> Hell, just make it a fucking ambulance match right off the bat. But, uh, yeah. Next, we have Thunder Rosa versus Serena Deeb, one of the other matches that could have potential to be match of the night. Um, these are two women who I think are literally two of the best in the industry and definitely the two best wrestlers in the female division of AEW currently. I mean, besides Tony Storm, but... I think Thunder Rosa is going to retain, but it's going to be one of the hardest fights she's ever had to deal with because the submission skills and abilities of Serena Deeb are second only maybe to two or three people I can think of off the top of my head. But it is going to be a very, very, very hard fought match. So the next match, this is interesting because things have been said and we'll see what happens or not. But like I said, in the last moments of um, AEW Rampage, which was just a couple hours ago, I'm surprised that they updated Wikipedia this quickly. But um, yeah, Darby Allen got a challenge out to Kyle O'Reilly. That was a big match. I think it was like one of those crazy big tag team matches. And, you know, the... Elite ganged up on on Sting, and it was in particular Kyle O'Reilly that targeted, and I, I think he broke Sting's ankle. You know, kayfabe not kayfabe, I don't know, but he broke Sting's ankle, and Sting is out of action. So Darby Allen came up and was like, "Okay, so it wasn't uh, Bobby Fish or Adam Cole or whatever. It was it was Kyle O'Reilly that messed up Sting. So I want you. Yeah, you know, I want to match with you. I'm gonna challenge you to a match." And, and uh, you know, double or nothing this this Sunday. And if you refuse, I'm gonna interfere with Adam Cole's match. I'm gonna interfere with the Young Bucks match. I'm gonna interfere, you know, with all the elite matches and make their make their night a living hell. So the thing is, the match is approved, but like the way he said that, like you know, why say if you're not gonna do it? Like I don't know. It kind of throws an extra monkey wrench if if Darby Allen does interfere in the Adam Cole match and also in the uh, Young Bucks match. So it's kind of interesting. But in terms of this match here, I'm going to give it to Darby Allen, And, I mean, we'll see. It's a numbers the number game. But still, I'm going to give it to, to Darby Allen. I mean, for all we know, they might do the thing where Sting surprisingly comes back now and everything to, to help them if the numbers get too crazy. But, um, yeah, I'm going to give it to Darby. So, yeah, a little bit of background on that. Yeah, Sting didn't hurt his ankle, but he is out on an actual undisclosed injury. We don't know what it is, but uh, non-kayfabe, he's actually out for a real injury. Um, now, as far as Darby Allen goes, I think this is just going to be part of that storyline where now he's got to prove himself without Sensei Sting being behind him. So we're going to see how that goes. I hate to say it. I'm going to have to give it to Kyle O'Reilly because I think, you know, Sting pretty much is what keeps him somewhat grounded and glued even as crazy as his style is so without him being there he's gonna go for some sick move and it's just gonna go downhill from there um because again i feel like 
Sting and Darby are going to be like a passing of the torch, and when Sting retires, he's going to give him the bat. So, like, he's pretty much taking the moniker up. But he's got to learn some mistakes on the way. And I think this is going to be one of those ones where it's going to be a mistake night. So as much as I would like Darby Allen to win, I got Kyle O'Reilly on this one. I never thought about that. It's his first match fighting without Sting Senpai. My opinion that maybe this is a big stretch, but I personally would like to see Darby add in win this match. Because, of course, it won't be a big struggle because you know, they're going to help it, but you know, Darby Adam, as talented as he has, is a one hell of a bad beating. And, you know, there is the the size difference between wrestlers. Like, Darby Adam always seems to be, like, the smarter guy in the ring. So, yeah, he, he seems to always take a big beating in these matches. But a part of me would also like to see that despite all that stuff, he's still able to overcome all that it's still able to win the match he'll barely win the match but he was still able to win the match and that would prove to the world that darby adding can it on his own and that he doesn't you know need to have steam so that, that that could be that could be kind of like the angle they're going with this match so i don't know uh, darby added might win the match i don't know what you guys think I mean, that is one credit, though. Darby yeah. Allen does take a lot of damage. But that would be, like, such an amazing match if he was still able to win, though. And, yeah, Johnny, I kind of agree with you there. He does take a lot of damage, but he also takes a lot of risk, which is what yeah, I think is going to bite him in the yeah. butt. You know, he doesn't have Sting to kind of go, whoa, hey, reel it back, buddy. You know, just, you yeah. know, don't jump off that rope right now. Just wait for a few minutes. So I think that's what's going to be the part that bites him in the ass. Now, it will be interesting, though, because it's, you know nobody's really going to stop him to do the crazy shit he wants to do all other types. It'd be very impactful to actually see all the stuff he's going to do. I don't know. This is, this is going to be one, one hell of a good match. I can tell you that. That's, that's the kind of match that you better hold it in. You better not have to. Don't use the bathroom. Watch the match. I think even though this is last minute, it's going to be a really, really good match. But I'm going to give it to Kyle O'Reilly for this one. So the next match is a big one here. And um, so we've got Sammy Guevara, Frankie Kazarian, and Ty Conti going up against Scorpio, Ethan Page, and Paige Vansant. So it's a big deal that, or is it Vansant or Vansant? I don't know, but... How it's pronounced anyway. But um, this is basically Paige's first official like match here in AEW. So that's kind of a big deal there. And also I believe it's their first uh, mixed tag match. And my understanding is Tony Khan is against the whole you know intergender matches. Where women and, and men are slapping each other around or whatever. So I kind of think they're going to. They, they might follow the WWE rules I guess. That whenever. Um. Ty gets into the ring, the guy has to leave, and Paige has to come in, and, and vice versa. I haven't really heard too much of the rules there, if we're going to do that. But, I mean, I don't know. I, I just know that whenever the topic comes up of the inter uh, matches and stuff, um, you know, um, like, uh, like he, Khan's not into that, so I don't know. And, um... Let me see here. Yeah, I forgot to mention that in the Wardlow match. That was stupid of me. I, I didn't notice that. Where And I, I do see your point where you were saying, um, uh, Ninja Panda, where if Wardlow wins, he'll be granted release from his contract. But if, uh, if Wardlow loses, no, if MJF wins, Wardlow will be permanently banned from signing with AEW. But, I, I mean, I don't know. They could work way around that. So I kind of feel Wardlow just has to win now. But uh, what I also heard about this match here. Yeah, and this one, and I saw it on social media. I don't see it here on Wikipedia, but on social media, it announced that um, if if um, what's the name? If Scorpio's no wait, no Scorpio's the current TAT champion. Okay, so if Scorpio's team wins, Sammy Guevara is no longer allowed to like challenge for the TNT title. Is what I heard. Which, in my opinion, is good news because this little back and forth it got kind of stupid after a while. The shades of Sasha and Charlotte, you know? So, um, I don't know. I want to give it a Scorpio. I like his attitude. 
I don't like Ethan Page much, but maybe he'll turn face or something. And Paige Bonsant, I mean, hey, we, I got, I want to see her in action. I want to see them two fight. I want to see them actually wrestle and not just do the the little fist fights people always do when they just get into the ring. So I want to see her actually wrestle and, and do things. So I'm gonna give it to Scorpio Sky. Kind of sick of uh, of Sammy Guevara, sorta the the the, the heel thing. And Ty Conti, kind of sick of it too. Like I don't know. I like Ty when she was on her own. It's kind of like those things. Like like I know you guys are going out in real life, but like you don't always have to bring your relationship like into the kayfabe. You know, it could be like Undertaker and Michelle McCool, where we never saw Michelle McCool the ringside or or walking alongside Undertaker like like a little cheerleader or whatever. You know what I mean? Like you don't always have to be going out like in kayfabe and. And I don't know, Ty hasn't really done too much since then. She's kind of just been like Sammy's little arm piece there since, since they did that. So she hasn't been having much matches. So I don't know, man. Um, I'm going for Scorpio Sky be, and his team, Ethan Page and Page Bonsant, because I just, I, I don't want any more title matches for the TNT title with those two. It's time for him to move on to other challengers. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. Um, like, literally, this is just a three-way match to just start uh, longer rivalries. I mean, I got a feeling that at the end of this, there's going to be a lot of back and forth between Sammy Guevara and Scorpio Sky and Tate Conti and Paige Van Zandt because both of them are uh, former mixed martial artists. So I got a feeling that it's going to be, you know, this is going to be one of those ones that causes a break-off and causes a bit of a storyline between the two. But, um, yeah, honestly, Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page, uh, and Page Van Zandt uh, seem to be the good uh, three for this match. Um, you know, Scorpio's got a decent bit of charisma. Uh, he needs to get a little bit more spotlight time, so this is definitely a good go for him. So, yeah, I'm going to give it to those guys. I agree with you guys because uh, I'm not saying that Sammy Guerrero is not a very he is a very good wrestler, but you know, like a lot of people, I'm not really a fan of his heel persona. I don't know, I don't know the way we went about that with him. So yeah, I don't know. They, they kind of rubbed me the wrong way. So you know, Scorpio Sky does he serve to uh, get a little bit more in that spotlight? And that would be a very interesting match. But I would also say that. Uh, it's not just going to be very interesting just for the fact that, you know, um, it's an intergender match. So you're also going to have women, you know, you're going to have Paige fighting against Ty Conti. And I'm pretty sure uh, because Khan is against the whole idea, I'm pretty sure they're going to go very conservative in terms of that. So I think it's most likely going to be that they're going to kind of limit that it's just the women fighting versus the women and versus but I don't know because it's all a tag team so you know, still I don't know people can still do little jabs here and there or you know they could still kind of hit the person with a chair a quick so I'm actually seeing from that angle that kind of possibility of happening this kind of but other than that uh um, I don't know. I think they're going to go very, um, very old school when it comes to the whole gender um, match setup. Although you guys, oh yeah, but but uh, but you know, just to be clear, I mean, I, I do root for the Bill Sky Ethan Page sense. As I'm confused, is it Van Zant or Van Zant? I, I can't tell. It's Van Zant. Oh, okay. I hope and i'm gonna go with american top team i cannot stand sammy guevara and i personally just cannot stand ty conti um frankie kazarian i do love but it's it's also scorpio sky has proven time and time again that he deserves to be the champion and he's done more with the title than sammy guevara has so i for that reason i'm gonna stick with American top team and um, so finally the big one the big main event here We've got is hangman Adam page your current AEW champion going up against CM Punk and yeah, it's been getting kind of heated 
between the two, they're spit, you know, at first it was kind of like, yeah, I'm going to challenge you and blah, 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 blah. But then, you know how it is, it eventually gets, like, uh, more personal and stuff between them. And, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Like, on one side, I kind of want, um, I kind of want uh, Hangman Page to still win, keep his title and everything. But CM Punk, like, I don't know, man. That, that, that's a big one. And also, it's kind of like, like, if, if uh, Hangman Page is going to lose his title... Like, I wouldn't mind it so much if we lost it to CM Punk. Like, yeah, not not to fucking Adam Cole or whatever, you know. But, like, versus CM Punk, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind that much. And also, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of, like, um, Batman, uh, the, the Dark Knight, uh, the Dark Knight Returns with Superman. Where Superman's, like, you know, step down or, or they're gonna, you know, if I don't stop you, there'll send other people who will or whatever. And Batman's like, yeah, right, who are they gonna send after you? It's kind of like, who, who else are they gonna send... To Hangman Page, like, after him, after CM Punk. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'll give it to CM Punk. Okay. I got a Hangman Page on this one. Like, and that was a tough decision for me to make, but it was kind of after a point you had just made with the whole Batman v Superman thing when you were like, yeah, right, who else is going to stop me? You got to think, Kenny Omega's been kind of sitting in the bag nursing an injury, and I think he's probably going to get cleared around then. So that should be a good time for him to show up. So I actually think Hangman Page is going to hold on to it, and then he's and then Kenny's going to show up. But then after a while, it's going to be a match between Omega and Punk. But just not right now. So I got a feeling that Hangman Page is going to hold on to it just for a little bit longer just for the time for uh, Kenny Omega to show up. Well, this is this is uh, this is the thing. You go either direction. You can go with CM, but uh, just see what happens with this whole Adam Page to Kenny Omega. Now that you mentioned. Yeah, on Kenny Omega's side, I do know he's gonna he's gonna want to come back. I've, I've seen people say that it's okay if he doesn't want to, or whatever. But I know him; he's got the passion. He's coming back, you know. But yeah, he did post somewhere where he realizes that like like he's training the parts that he can train right now, while the other parts of him are still healing. But he's saying that he knows he's not gonna come back at a hundred percent after this, after all these surgeries. But I still think that due to his strong passion of wrestling and everything. I mean, he's going to probably want to go out for just one last run at AEW and possibly other promotions here or there. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if he was, like, in either this year's or next year's G1 Climax or some some other thing, too. You know, some, something big, too, so, to to wrap it up for a career. But, uh, but yeah, that, he already did announce that. Even if he comes back, he won't be at 100%, so we'll see how that goes. But it is kind of poetic in a way almost to, like, Lose the title to Hangman Page and then, like, get it back from him or something, you know? But I don't know. We'll see. You know, not to mention they've got that whole Forbidden Door deal. So who knows may walk out? who may walk out of that. I mean, Kenny may win the title and next thing you know, it could be, you know, Rain Okada that shows up or maybe even worse, Koto Ibushi. Um, <laughs> and then they have to have a match in AEW, which, you know, that's going to be a clincher. So... You know, who knows what may happen, but I call me a conspiracy theorist, but I got a feeling Kenny Omega is going to pop back up on this one. So that's why I'm saying they're going to give it to Hangman. Holy shit. This is a match I have been salivating at because I love both of these guys, especially Punk. I made no mistake about it that I love Punk. I have loved Punk since Ring of Honor. I loved his WWE run, and I love the fact that he's back and, despite his age, has been very, very good. And with that being said, I want Punk to win. I want him to win. But I believe what will happen is that Kenta from New Japan Pro Wrestling will come in and GTS Punk costing him the title and Hangman will retain with Punk setting up a match with Kenta at Forbidden Door. Because New Japan, make no mistake, is coming for AEW. And that's coming from the guy who's the New Japan guy. 
We've already seen a snippet of it from Dynamite. And there's definitely going to be more surprises coming. Now, one thing I do want to say, though, I, I'm just to wrap up, I think, here. Um, I wonder who will be, like, the first guy or, or girl or first situation where someone actually does have one of those, you know, uh, they won the title this pay-per-view. Maybe they lose it right away in the next one or you lose it two weeks down the line of Dynamite or something. Always going to be the first one who gets a short reign. I mean, we've had some, but they've been kind of like the back and forths. You know what I mean? Like, Cody lost it to, uh, to, uh, um... Brody Lee, Brody Lee got it back and all that stuff. We had the, the back and forth with, with Cody and, and Sammy and then the back and forth with Sammy and Scorpio Sky and whatever. But but those, like, they've always had decent reigns before the back and forth, so I don't really count them. And, and even if you count Scorpio's uh, reign short, now he's actually having a decent one now that he won it back, you know what I mean? But I wonder who's going to be the first person to, like, win the title and then lose it right away next match or, or next two matches down the line or some shit. As time goes on, as as the history of AEW evolves, you know. Yeah, I got a feeling it's gonna be a Samoa Joe because Adam Cole's not just, you know, gonna let that whole Owen Hart Foundation thing go down. Even if, even though they're not title holders, I got, a, I got a feeling like within that next week, Adam Cole's gonna find some way to beat the snot out of him. It's gonna be a back and forth between those two. Even without a title on the line, that's that's just how I'm feeling on that one. Yeah. But I mean in terms of who do you think would be like the do, do you predict like in like down the line maybe Lance Archer wins the title and then he just drops it next week or something. Like I wonder who's gonna be the first person who, who draws the short straw on that. Because sooner or later, like it has to be unpredictable. After a while Everyone's going to know, like, well, Kenny Omega just had the title last week. There's no way he's losing it now. You know, like, like it's going to get predictable that everyone in AEW has these long title reigns. So I wonder when they will do something like that where, let's say, Ty Conti or, or Anna J wins a title. And they're like, whoa, the, the following week, Chris Stantlander took it or something. Like, I don't know. I wonder who will be the first one to draw the, the short straw. Honestly, looking at this lineup, to be honest with you, I, I have a bad feeling on this one and i'm probably gonna shoot myself in the foot if it comes true but it's gonna be keith lee and swerve strickland and the reason why i say that is because of the build-up they they uh the young bucks have between the hardy boys so i got a feeling that you know keith lee and swerve strickland win the titles they get their spotlight but then the young bucks you know beat the crap out of them get the titles again oh boohoo and then come the next pay-per-view Matt and Jeff are going for the titles against the Young Bucks, which, of course, the crowd's going to lose their mind if they see something like that. So I got a feeling that that's what that's going to progress to. It's going to work its way back up to the um, the Young Bucks getting the titles again. And everybody's going to be like, oh, shit, not again. And then the Hardy Boys are going to challenge them, and everybody's going to be like, oh, shit, let's go, you know. But that is the interesting thing you did mention, though. Imagine if they did that, too. Imagine if Hangman Page retained the title, Kenny Omega comes back, beats up, gets the title, and then, like, like right right after, you know, Kota Ibushi or someone comes and takes the title. Like, that'd be interesting, too. Yeah, because even though they sort of resolved it, you know, there's still a little bit of a crazy blood between him and Ibushi with the whole Golden Lovers deal. And then Rain Okada, let's, let's face it, I mean... Him and Kenny Omega have broken the Meltzer meter three times. You know, it's five. You know, this guy's supposed to only have five star matches, and they're getting six and seven stars from Dave Meltzer, which means a lot. So to have something like that here on American soil would blow the roof off of a uh, dailies if they were in the stadium already. So yeah, I got a feeling that that's what's gonna happen. So he wraps it up for now, guys. We'll see what happens. We'll do our tallies and see who won and who lost and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, any uh, closing thoughts or any other things that's going on? I'm also curious, if if, WO, if Women of Wrestling does get off the ground and they do become a success and have, you know, all these awesome female wrestlers and stuff, and they do have their first, you know, pay-per-view whenever. I mean, would you guys be interested in watching it or anything? I mean, obviously, I'll get it for myself, and Johnny can just watch it too. But would anyone else, would you guys, would you be watching it, for example? Or maybe we could do reviews on those if, if it's, like, cool, if it's good enough and, and exciting enough. And you got, you know, cool stars and stuff. And 
Dude, it like to me honestly, the gender thing isn't really a matter. It's just a matter of if the wrestling's good. So I'll be all down to check it out. Yeah, because that was you can slowly expand our show with AW Ring of Honor and hopefully Women of Wrestling. We'll check that out. I, I would love to see AJ Lee. I know she can't like, get in the ring anymore for whatever reason. I think she still could if she like you know worked out or whatever, get back in ring shape or whatever. But I would love to see some. You know, like those altercations, you know, maybe some shit's going down, they're breaking the rules or whatever. Then AJ Lee comes in in her suit or whatever to try to break it up. You had to see her do, you know, something or whatever, you know. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be dope. That'd be cool to see her and, you know, hell, if Paige would uh, get on uh, Women of Wrestling, that would be amazing. Yeah. Is she is she completely healed or, or cleared or whatever for neck injury? I believe she is completely healed, but, like, I know WWE didn't want to take any chances on it. So, we'll have to see there, but from what I know, she's completely clear to go. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I just wonder what she's doing. I know she's been kind of keeping quiet. I haven't, I haven't seen anything on Instagram or whatever of her, like, you know, bulking up or, you know, at the gym or whatever. But, um, that would be interesting, man. But that's the thing, though. She's still stuck with WWE, though. That's the problem. So... Maybe whenever her contract's up, because she's really not doing anything, to be honest, in regards to WWE. So, maybe when her contract's up or whatever, um, she can, uh, yeah, she can give a big surprise entrance. You know, do do the infamous, you know, triple match with so-and-so, so-and-so, and a mysterious third opponent. And it turns out to be Paige. I mean, that would, that would fucking blow the house. You know, or she could just pull a John Moxley on the uh, first AEW and just, like, come through the crowd and just pop up and be like, Hi, guys. Yeah. Oh, that'd be fucking awesome. But, yeah, I don't know what her WWE status is because, I mean, pff, I don't even know what the fuck she's doing. I mean, the last we talked about her was when she was on Twitch and Vince was pissed off or whatever, but because she was still under WWE employee, I don't know what the fuck she's doing now. Oh, by the way, another thing we, I, I just wanted to add real quick is the whole thing with Sasha Banks and uh, Naomi is not only were they like completely removed off the WWE shop, like all their merch is fucking gone, which I know Naomi's like not that big a draw, but Sasha Banks is, I'm assuming, one of like the bigger women, like top sellers in terms of merchandise and all her shit's gone, which I'm glad I got a couple of shirts before all this shit started because damn, they're all gone, you know? And also, um, recent reports are now saying that they're not only like un like under suspension, but suspension like without pay. So that's that's got to suck for them. Yeah, again, uh, like I said, it's an unspoken rule. Yeah, your booking might suck, but you don't walk out on it. I mean, and that's kind of the price you pay for that. But, you know, I'm sure they'll bounce back and find something else elsewhere. Um <sighs> Like, oddly enough, Sasha's kind of had some New Japan in her blood, so who knows? She might end up going to New Japan. Yeah. And not only that, but hopefully we'll get Ricky Rocks well, one of these days. He might be for the next episode, but we're not sure. But, I mean, he has some choice words about, about the whole thing with Sasha, Naomi, and like you said, the whole thing of, you know, no matter how bad the booking is, you don't you just don't walk out or whatever. So that'll be, that'll be something to look forward to if we could get him. But yeah, I think that's it for now, guys. We're going to, um, you know, wrap this up here. We're going to enjoy the pay-per-view. And, of course, when the pay-per-view is over, we'll come back here. We'll talk about, like, our thoughts on it and could do our do our comparisons here and there, who we thought, you know, won or lost and all that good stuff. And that'll be awesome. And, uh, of course, we are going to review The Forbidden Door. And also, yeah, there's cool women of, of wrestling pay-per-views whenever they start up because, obviously, you got to have to show first i guess you know and i'm um, also whenever ring of honor also kind of gets back up and they're like you know doing pay-per-views hey we'll cover them all you know we, we just i mean we'll, we'll, we'll cover the uh slow agonizing death of wwe and of course you guys are more in open to kind of give your thoughts here and there on, on whatever but i mean yeah we're mostly kind of covering like the, the other side of wrestling it's not just wwe you know not just the, the sports entertainers you know but, uh, yeah, so this is Mark Rodriguez here signing off for the Diving Cutter Podcast. We might, a.k.a. Ninja Panda 1980 on Instagram. Hey, this is Johnny Rodriguez, and, you know, it's always cool to be here on these podcasts. This has been Jack from Jack Knives Reviews, signing out. <laughs>